This training video is going to cover Section 2 of the Arizona Resale Residential Purchase Contract. Many times when you're going to have a problem with a purchase contract, it's going to be in Section 2. Section 2 is the financing section, and it's going to cover whether or not the buyer can afford to buy the property if there's going to be a loan. And the seller obviously thinks this is important because they want to know that they're going to be able to close escrow. Line 54 of the purchase contract is going to cover the pre-qualification form. This is the form filled out by the lender that tells you whether or not the buyer is pre-qualified to buy the house. From the buyer's agent's point of view, it is always a good idea to have your buyer pre-qualified before you ever show them properties. From the seller's agent's point of view, you always want to counsel your client to only accept contracts from pre-qualified buyers. So unless your checking is in this box, as a seller's agent, there's an additional waiver that we would need the sellers to fill out. Next, we'll talk about line 74. As we've already advised you to have a pre-qualification form, look at the pre-qualification form. It will tell you what type of loan, conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, that the buyer is obtaining. Simply check the box. Line 77 and 78, this is a common mistake area for licensees. 77 says, in addition to other costs, sellers agree to pay herein. The seller agrees to pay X percent of the closing price price or X dollars on the closing price. It is important as a licensee that you never fill both of these boxes in with a number. For instance, if I'm going to have 3% the seller is going to concede in closing costs or pay towards the buyer's closing costs, and if I were to put 3000 on line 78, the problem with that is those might be the same today, but if the purchase price ever changes for any reason, such as a counteroffer or an addendum, I've, I've now written an ambiguous contract, and we're not sure which one to follow. The 3%, which could be more or less than 3000 So, as you're filling out the contract, you would only put one number in the box. The other box would always get an NA. For instance, if I'm going to place 3% in line 77, on line 78, I would always place an NA. It's also important to remember in number boxes, you cannot place an NA until you press the space bar first. So press the space bar and then type NA. Remember to never put two numbers in those boxes, including a zero. If I were to put 3% in zero, once again, I've written an ambiguous contract. On line 79, in the event you're obtaining a VA loan, there are certain costs that the veteran is not allowed to pay dock fees, escrow fees, and the like. In that event, contact the buyer's lender and the buyer's lender will tell you how much the seller is going to have to contribute and place that on line 79. Since we've on box 74 checked a conventional loan, we will not put anything in this box and therefore we will put an NA. Once again, because this is a number field, I have to press space and then NA. Changes to the contract. Section 2L says anytime you make changes to the contract, you must notify the seller's agent. In the event it's going to adversely affect, you must get permission from the seller's agent. This is a very commonly breached item in the contract. Puff. Section 2M. In the event that the buyer is obtaining a loan, you can leave the appraisal contingency alone. However, if this is an all-cash sale according to line 53, there is no section 2. You would need to take this appraisal contingency paragraph and place it under additional terms on page 7. What you'll need to change is on line 86 where it says appraisal is required by the lender. Obviously there is no lender if this is an all-cash sale, so you'd put appraisal that is acceptable to the buyer. Other than that, you could write this in verbatim in additional terms. Next. The appraisal fee. Section 2N discusses who is going to pay, buyer, seller, other. Other, for instance, might be paid half and half. It might be that the buyer is going to pay up front, the seller will pay at close of escrow, or vice versa. Today we'll have the seller pay that. Next, appraisal fee is or is not included in the seller concessions. On line 77, we've given a 3% of the closing costs to be paid by the seller, so those are called seller concessions. 
what we're saying by checking the box they are not included is that we are going to have 3% plus the appraisal fee that the seller is going to pay. So they're not just paying the 3%, they're paying the 3% and the appraisal fee on top of that. As always, please remember that if you have any questions when you're filling out the residential purchase contract, to contact me immediately. I am more than happy to answer your questions.